Live from Fox Providence, this is Eyewitness News First on Fox Providence. Coverage you can count on. And we begin first with breaking news that we've been working all night long. A mammoth fire in West Warwick. Using the Pinpoint News Tracker, Eyewitness News giving you a detailed look at where that fire is still burning. It's an abandoned mill on Main Street. Now this was the scene just earlier tonight from News Chopper 12. Flames and heavy smoke could be seen for miles. Firefighters battling the intense blaze. Let's get right to Eyewitness News reporter Walt Buteau, who's live at the scene with breaking details. And I can tell you, we talked with the West Warwick police chief. He tells us that this is now a crime scene. This is a suspicious fire. And we can push down Main Street and let you see they are knocking it down still. You see a lot of white smoke, which means they are putting the fire out. This is the part that burned first. This is the part the fire department put out first. More on why it's suspicious in a moment. But again, this went from a fire to a crime scene. And now the investigation is underway. Before it looked like this, black smoke coming up. Don Northup was driving by what used to be Scott Laboratories. And uh, we've seen the smoke, so we drove to the fire station, knocked on the door, told them there was a fire over there at the, at the Scott Laboratories mill. And that, that was it, they took off. The West Warwick Fire Department responded right away, followed by Warwick, Coventry, and Cranston. Eventually, five streets would be blocked off to control traffic. Crowds formed right away, and many onlookers couldn't believe the size of the fire. I only live a quarter of a mile up the road, and the trucks kept coming and coming and coming, and then we heard the news on the TV. I was ready for bed. My grandson said, let's go. And I said, smoke, you know, near the thing, and then the cops came. They told us, get out, get out, get out. They even broke the door downstairs. West Warwick police tell us since there was no electricity running into the building, it was considered suspicious right away. Detectives were here, as well as state police. As Northup watched the old mill burn, he couldn't believe the fire got this big so quickly. Like, after I, call, after I went to the fire thing, I called my wife. By the time she got down here, the flames were shooting out of that thing, boy. Another concern of the firefighters battling this blaze is what was in that mill. Of course, the oil-soaked boards, the floorboards, and as well, other chemicals. That, perhaps, part of the investigation as well, eventually. The fire marshal from the state of Rhode Island also on the scene right now. We're live with the Mobile Newsroom, Walt Buteau, Eyewitness News. News Chopper 12 flying high above the flames tonight. Dennis Protsko joins us with the latest information from the sky. And Dennis, you've been high above there for the past few hours. What's the scene look like now? Well, Karen, at this point, you can tell that the firefighters down below from a number of surrounding communities getting the upper hand, mainly because the fire is basically running out of energy. Not much left as far as fuel goes for this fire. Of course, the the roof of this building collapsing very, very quickly. A lot of the surrounding walls, the outer walls also coming down. Of course, those walls are made out of brick. The large timbers that made up the inner structure of this building, and of course, the ceiling and the roof material has all come down and basically burned out at this point. As we widen out, you can see a lot of white smoke coming out of Coventry and others. At this point, we can tell you that there's at least 12 sources of water being thrown on this fire, including three tower ladders, a number of master streams, which are highly charged, very heavy hoses that are being fired on this building, and a number of also deck guns from some of the surrounding engines, and also hand lines. So at least 12 sources of water as we bring you down the street again. This is Main Street, the fire on the right side of your picture, and surrounding houses nearby. So far, none of these houses have been at least heavily damaged, of course they have been evacuated. We did hear one report of some of the siding on some of these nearby houses actually melting due to the extreme heat, but so far no houses in the surrounding area have been majorly affected and none have caught fire. At this point we have not heard of any injuries as far as firefighters go and definitely no injuries as far as civilian goes, so that remains a good point. At this far, as far as the fire goes at this point, again, firefighters trying to get the water up on top of this, this fire. The outer shell here, you can see a number of the walls have collapsed. In fact, this northern section, the majority of the wall has collapsed, this outer wall. This is the clock tower, the very prominent 
front portion here along Main Street, the tallest portion of this building that's over five stories tall. You can see that's still intact with some portions of the wall still intact as well nearby. Again, this is the western side that you're looking at now as, as fire crews here still remain here on scene trying to get the upper hand. At this point, you can see as we widen out, plenty of white smoke coming up. As I mentioned, not a lot of fuel left for this fire, but again, it's going to be an all night long activity here as far as this fire goes. Plenty of activity still here going on, and it will be for some time. Reporting live aboard News Chopper 12, I'm Dennis Protzko. Back to you in the studio. All right, thank you, Dennis. Continuing our team coverage on this raging inferno tonight, Eyewitness News reporter Audrey DeRozier sees live on the ground in West Warwick. Audrey? Well, right now, Steve, we're standing in the middle of Phoenix Square, which is just a few hundred feet from where this fire is now. If you can see here, the square right now almost empty. Just moments ago, this though, this was full of look of onlookers, people who have been evacuated from this area, people running out of their homes when they saw the smoke and the flames grabbing anything they could carry. Some just standing there in shock as they watch the flames creep closer to their homes. The flames coming dangerously close to a neighborhood that watched in awe and fear as the mill erupted in flames. I was in the bathroom and I smelled smoke. And so I saw a big, thick cloud of smoke coming over there by the other apartments. Jennifer Adams saw ashes coming through her windows. She grabbed her three young children and ran outside. Right now, she's not being allowed back into her apartment. Her whole neighborhood now evacuated. It was, it was very scary. I got... I couldn't imagine how my children feel. This man's worried about his automotive business, keeping a close eye as the fire spread. He says he's been here for 20 years and never seen anything like it. There's, there's big chunks of firewood coming down, landing on my cars in the parking lot, and I'm literally probably uh, 500 feet away from the building. Kenneth Wynn and Ken Knowlton also forced out of their homes. They watched as thick black smoke crept over the neighborhood. Ken ran out grabbing his dog and cat not knowing what was in store for his home. I had to get him out of the house. I, you know, I don't know about the house. This spraying it with hoses, hopefully everything is going to be fine. I was very emotional. Um, no place to go tonight but my aunts. And uh, uh, me and my grandmother lived at that house for t almost 20 something years. And it's a shame that that building had to catch on fire like that. Now, at this point, we can tell you that all the people that were evacuated out of this area were told to go to the West Warwick Senior Center. Right now, though, it appears that these homes, at least in this immediate area, appear to be not to be in danger at this point. Although, as far as we can tell, they are not letting them back into their homes as of yet. Many looking for other places to stay, at least for the night. We're live in West Warwick with the Mobile Newsroom. Audrey DeRozier's Eyewitness News. And offering a perspective for those in the area who treasure the historic Lippet Mill, we understand that no damage was done to that, which is quite nearby this mill tonight. For more of the amazing video that you've seen tonight so far on Eyewitness News, you can log on to our website. We've got some streaming video there at WPRI.com. And as always, count on Eyewitness News to have the latest information on this mill fire. Coverage begins at 5 o'clock tomorrow on our sister station, WPRI. In other news, shots fired, one person hit, another killed. Tonight, police are looking for the trigger man and trying to determine what led to the violence. The Eyewitness News Pinpoint Tracker is giving you a detailed look at where that shooting happened. Nine a month with Smart by Financing. Residency restrictions apply. Call for details. Big deals for the big dance. But hurry, offers end March 31st. See your local Chevy dealer today. The place to go for March Truck Madness is St. Angelo. Hurry in now and get a 2005 Sierra 4x4 1500 pickup for $267 a month. For one of the area's largest inventories of Buick, Pontiac, and GMC, it's St. Angelo, Route 44 East. We are continuing our coverage of breaking news out of West Warwick, covering a massive mill fire. You've seen it high in the sky. Now let's go down to the ground where Eyewitness News reporter Audrey DeRosiers has the very latest on the scene. Audrey. Well, firefighters are still putting water on this old mill building. As you can see, they are just trying to keep it cooled down, keep it under control. We have learned the state fire marshal is on scene. We've been told just moments ago that they will not be getting into this building anytime soon, probably within the next few days because it is too hot. They want to make sure that the structure is sound enough for them to get in and investigate this fire being labeled suspicious at this hour. Again, no injuries, though. The fire under control at this hour. Now we're live in West Warwick. Audrey DeRozier's Eyewitness News. 
All right, thank you, Audrey. Well, tonight on American Idol, it went from 10 to 9. Do you ever wonder what goes into choosing the songs that you hear on American Idol? Well, there's a process that the contestants go through. On stage, the performances may look polished, but the contestants actually only have a few days to pick the very song they want and then learn the orchestration. They do it right here, above the television studio in a laid back room. Michael Orlin, that fellow right there, is the associate music director who works with the guys and gals as they try to figure out what song to sing. Dorian Holly helps the contestants with their stage performance and together, they help the contestants make their choices and look like pros, hopefully. More local coverage coming up on Eyewitness News First on Fox Providence. Terrifying moments for one mother. Her baby disappears. Find out how employees at this Walmart were finally able to locate the baby. Plus, this woman sold her name on eBay. Find out how much one company paid to rename her and what they ended up calling her. The Stock Report is brought to you by Bank Rhode Island's Custom Business Banking. Now it's easier to switch to a better bank for business. Visit bankri.com slash switch.